This is part 29 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to build a form in Blazor with an example. We can use the standard HTML, form and input elements to create a Blazor form. However, Blazor comes with several built-in form and input components that make the task of creating a form much easier. These built-in Blazor form components also support form validation. We'll discuss form validation in our upcoming videos. The following are some of the available built-in Blazor form components. For example, if you want an input text element, we use the built-in input text component. Similarly, if we want a multi-line text box that is a text area, we use input text area. And for a date picker, we use input date for a checkbox, input checkbox. And if we want an input element for numbers, it's input number. And for a drop-down list, it is input select. Now. Let's understand building a form in Blazor with an example. Let's say we want to edit employee details. To be able to edit employee details, we must first retrieve the respective employee details and display them within a form as you can see right here. At the moment, we see the employee details whose ID is 1. And if we change this ID to 2, we see the employee details whose ID is 2. We can now use these form controls and change the employee data. And then once we click the save button, we want to save this data in the underlying data store. We'll discuss updating data in the database and implementing form validation in our upcoming videos. In this video, we'll discuss how to build this edit employee form using the Blazor built-in form and input components. In Blazor, a form is defined using edit form component. The model attribute specifies the data the form will bind to and work with. In this example, model attribute value is employee. And this is a property in our component class and carries the employee data the form will bind to and work with. To be able to edit employee first name, we need an input element of type text. So we are using the Blazor input text component. This component binds to employee.firstName using the bind value attribute. This attribute provides two-way data binding. This means on the form load, the value in the first name property of the employee object is displayed in the input element. And if we make a change to the first name by changing the value in the input element, employee.firstName property in the component class is automatically updated with the changed value. In our project to this pages folder, let's add a new Blazor component. Let's name it Edit Employee. To be able to get to this component, we want to use the URL slash Edit Employee. Slash, we also want to pass the ID of the employee whose details we want to edit. Now, we want to place the C sharp code for this component in a separate code behind class. So, to the pages folder, let's add a new class file. Name it Edit Employee Base. Make the class derive from component base. Bring in the required namespace and then link this class with our view using the inherits directive. Notice we have a red squiggly and when I have the mouse over, it's complaining it cannot find the type edit employee base. But if we take a look at our component class, we have that class right here. And the reason Visual Studio is complaining is because IntelliSense is not working. If this happens to you, save the files, close them, reopen them again and IntelliSense should work. There we go. The errors are gone. Now, to be able to edit employee details, we must first retrieve the respective employee details. For that, let's inject I employee service. We need to bring in the required namespace. Let's do that by pressing control period. Next, to hold the employee data that we retrieve by calling the REST API, we need a property of type employee. This is the property our form will bind to. Bring in the required namespace. Remember, the ID of the employee whose details we want to edit will be passed in the URL. So let's create a property with the same name ID and it's decorated with the parameter attribute. So this property is going to automatically receive the employee ID from the URL. Our next step is to override on initialized async method. 
Inside this method, we call our REST API and retrieve the employee data. The retrieve data is stored in the employee property and this is the property our form will bind to. We have a REST quickly, that's because we are using the await keyword but forgot async. Our next step is to create the form itself. Remember, in Blazor, to create a form, we use the built-in edit form component and the model for this form is the employee property within our component class. Inside the form, let's include an H3 element with text edit employee, a horizontal line and then a div element with these two bootstrap classes for styling. Inside the div element, we want a label for first name. Again, these two bootstrap classes for styling, the text on the label is first name. Below the label, we need another div element. All these div elements and bootstrap classes are for styling, nothing really Blazor specific. Now, to be able to edit employee first name, we need an input element of type text. For that, we use the built-in input text component. Notice, as soon as I type input, we see all the built-in input components like input checkbox, input date, input number, etc. We need input text. Set the ID to first name and then we want to bind this input element to the first name property on this employee object. For that, we use bind value attribute and set the value to employee dot first name. With this, we have a label and the corresponding input element to be able to edit employee first name. We want to do the same for employee last name and email. So this code is very similar to what we already have for employee first name. The only difference is we are binding to the last name and email properties of the employee object. Now, in the pages folder, we have this display employee component and this component displays a given employee details. On this component, we also have edit button and when we click that button, we want to get to this edit employee component. So let's change the HTML there. Here is the edit button. When we click this, we want to send the user to edit employee component, passing it the ID of the employee. We have an edit button even on this employee details component. Same idea here. When this edit button is clicked, send the user to edit employee component, passing it the employee ID. Let's save all these changes and take a look at the browser. At the moment, we are on the home page and when we click edit, we are redirected to edit employee component, passing it the ID of the employee and we see the edit employee form as expected. The same thing happens even when we click the edit button on employee details component. In this video, we used just two of the built-in components, edit form and input text. In our upcoming videos, we'll discuss working with date picker, drop-down list, radio buttons, etc. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening. Thank you.